31, welcome to example three. Now in example three, I'm gonna work this problem in two ways. I wanna show you how we can work this using a sub zero e to the kt. And then I also wanna just contrast that with the way we did it back in section 6.1 so that you can see that both of them are working. Um, and the only reason I would prefer the 6.7 method is because my base is e and I have a natural log function. All right, a, a natural log key on my calculator, excuse me. Um, so that's the only reason I prefer using the a sub zero e to the kt version is that in some questions after we get that exponential model, um, I have to natural log both sides and I have that button where the, the version that we did in 6.1 doesn't really allow me to do that. Although I really could just common log or natural log both sides and I, I still get there. But anyways, let's, let's read through this. Try and listen for the variables. There's two of them like always. See if you can listen for any ordered pairs and then and we'll start working this. All right, so due to a tainted breakfast, uh, excuse me, due to tainted breakfast sandwiches served in the student center, a strange virus is broken out on campus and students are rapidly turning into zombies. If the outbreak occurs, excuse me, if the outbreak begins with seven students turning into zombies and the rate of campus zombism grows at 17% every minute, how many zombies will roam the school after 30 minutes? Round your answer to the nearest whole zombie. All right, so let's take a, take a step back. We've got some time that's occurring, right? Because I see minutes here. And we also have zombies. I initially started with seven zombies, but we're growing 17% a minute. That's a lot. That means if you had 100 zombies, in the next minute you have 117 zombies. That, that's a lot to grow by. But that's all fine and good. What I want to do, I want to think about ordered pairs, and I can hear one of them, right? They gave me the initial amount. So I hear zero, seven, right? And I also know I'm going to use this a sub zero e to the kt. All right, and so that's great. I can see my a value there, but I do need a second ordered pair so that I can solve for k. Well, let's think about this. If you initially have seven zombies, how many would you have one minute later? And I think some of you would say, well, I'll just multiply. I'll take seven times 0.17, right? And you'll say, I'll have an extra 1.19 zombies. Okay, I would argue be more efficient. And here's what I mean, because this is what most folks do. They take seven, multiply it by 0.17, and then they add it to their initial amount. And so I'll get this next ordered pair of one, 8.19, right? So this is how many I grew by in that extra minute. And then I add that to initial, my initial amount. And when I say be more efficient, this is what I do. I take seven and I multiply it by 1.17. Because if you remember, one is equilibrium, right? That keeps you at seven. And then I'm going to add 17% to that, all right? And that gets me to 8.19. So where I think most of us do this method, they do it in two steps, right? Multiply by 17%, see how you're gonna grow. You know, that's how many zombies you're gonna grow by. Add that to your initial amount. I, I've told you forever, I'm lazy and I like to be efficient. So the one is equilibrium that keeps my seven. This addition of 0.17 accounts for my growth. But it, at either rate, I'm there, right? There are my two ordered pairs. So as I start to work through this, I can see a sub zero is seven. So at this point, I know y is equal to seven e to the kt. And I'm gonna plug in 8.19 for y and one for t. So we'll get 8.19 is equal to seven e to the k times one, or just e to the k. And again, I have my variable that I'm looking for. I mean, it's technically a constant, but I wanna solve for k. I, I wanna solve for it, so I need to isolate my exponential term. I'm gonna divide both sides by seven. So I'm gonna get e to the k being equal to 8.19 over seven, whatever that number is. And now let me go ahead and natural log both sides. And then I'm gonna have that k is equal to whatever this number winds up being. Can we see that? Let me scooch this up just a bit so we have some room. All right, so k will be equal, because these are gonna to cancel, to the natural log of 8.19 over seven. Let's see what that is. So that's not the best fraction. Okay. So as I do that, we'll do natural log 8.19 divided by seven. It looks like my K is about 0.157. Okay, great.
All right, now I'm gonna leave a little space because I wanna do this problem in the other, the other way also. All right, so as I'm moving through this, we will have y is equal now to 7e to the 0.157t. Okay, great. So I've got my model. Let's see what the question actually said. It said, how many zombies will roam the school after 30 minutes? All right, so 30 is the number I'm working with, but I see that it's minutes. Minutes is a T value, not a Y value. So I'm actually gonna plug this in for T. This is the easier version of the problem where they give you the independent variable and ask you for the dependent. It's always trickier when they give you the Y value and ask you for the T value, a la examples one and two. All right, so here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, what is Y when T is equal to 30? And you don't have to use this notation, but I do want you just to see it. So this is notation where we say get the y value at t equaling 30, right? So this will be 7e to the 0.157 times 30. And let's see what that number is equal to. So we'll go 7e to the 0.157, oops, times 30. How many zombies are we gonna have roaming Chabot after 30 minutes? Ugh, gross, we're gonna have 777. 0.365. All right, now it says round your answer to the nearest whole zombie. So if I want to round this, this will be approximately 777 zombies. All right, so there is my answer. If we have an outbreak at Chabot and seven people get infected initially and it's spreading at a rate of 17% every minute, then I will eventually, not eventually, after a half hour, there will be 777 zombies floating, floating around Chabot. All right, so this was using the E to the KT formula. I want you to think about section 6.1 when we did A to the BX. I'm not A to the BX, A times B to the X. All right, so let's rework this with our, our, our information here where I didn't have to calculate this ordered pair. All right, they did tell me my initial amount Oh gosh, I just put an E there, out of habit. My initial amount was seven. All right, now back in 6.1, we talked about this base B. If you're gonna use general base B to the X, B can't be equal to one because one is equilibrium, right? If, if you have just powers of one, this winds up being the constant function Y equals seven. But they did tell you your growth was 17% per minute. And that is exponential growth. When you're growing by a multiple of your previous amount, that is absolutely exponential growth. So you know that your base turns into your equilibrium, equilibrium amount plus that 17%. So whenever you have exponential growth, you're gonna have a base larger than one. If you have exponential decay, your base will be smaller than one. And again, one is equilibrium. That's neither growth nor decay. So this becomes y equaling seven times 1.17 to the x. And then if I wanna plug in 30, and you could call this T if you wanted to for time, but let's see what this would be equal to. So if I go to my calculator and I do seven times 1.17 to the 30, well, there I am. It's a slightly different answer if you look at the decimals because I, I rounded this to 8.19 zombies. I didn't use the full decimal value. So this would still be we got 770.45, I would still get around 777 zombies. Okay, so you've got the 6.1 method and this is the section 6.7 method. So let me tell you, let me just write this. This is the section 6.1 method, which still works, right? And this is the section 6.7 method. So this has a base of a number other than E, right? And this has base E. And they're both, they're both fine. And, and if you wanna just see a little, little tweak right here, take a look at what E to the 0.157 would be. I want us to just take a look at E to the 0.157, ignore the, ignore the 30. If we did, oops, E to the 0.157, what number are we pretty close to? 1.17, mind blown, all right? So you've got two methods. The reason I personally prefer this is because I have this natural log key on my function, on my calculator, and this cancels nicely. But it's really not that much harder to do natural or solving for Y values using the LN button here also. 
All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna start talking about Half-Life. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.